If you or a loved one are scheduled for cataract surgery in the near future, this is urgent news that you need to hear right now. There was big news in the world of cataract surgery this week when on Thursday, Bosch and Lom announced a voluntary recall of their Invista line of lenses, including the Invista Envy lens, the Invista Inspire lens, and some of the Invista monofocal lenses. Now, this recall was due to an increased incidence or an increased reporting of cases of toxic anterior segment syndrome, or TAS. In this video, I'm gonna give you a detailed breakdown about this recall and what we know up to this point. I'll also explain what TAS is and give some important information if you're having cataract surgery coming up or especially if you've recently had cataract surgery and you had one of these recalled lenses implanted in your eye. Now real quick, before we go further in the video, my name's Brad Sifrig. I'm a board certified cataract surgeon and this is the Cataract Companion YouTube channel. It's a channel I made to help cataract patients feel more confident about their surgery and to get their best result. Okay, let's jump into it. So this recall stems, as I mentioned, from a recent increase in the reports of TAS, or Toxic Anterior Segment Syndrome, following cataract surgery in which Invista lenses were implanted. We will get into the details of TAS in a minute here, but suffice it to say for now that TAS is a severe inflammatory response in the eye following cataract surgery. TAS is a serious complication during cataract surgery because if it's not promptly identified and treated, it can lead to permanent vision problems. Before we go further into the medical side of things, let's step back a minute and look at this recall, how we got to where we're at, and what we know about these lenses right now. I want to start by saying that this is an ongoing situation. We're still very early, and in general, Bosch and Lam, as well as surgeons around the country, are in the information gathering stage. Now, I first started hearing some rumors about increased incidence of TAS with Invista lenses really just within the past one to two weeks. Through my network with other cataract surgeons throughout the country, we were starting to see surgeons report increased incidence of TAS compared to what they would normally expect with cataract surgery. In particular, in the last couple of weeks, I've started to see multiple surgeons who've had one case or more than one case of TAS, specifically when they're using these Invista lenses. Now, full disclosure, before we go any further, I don't have any financial relationship with Bosch & Lam or any other ophthalmology manufacturing company. That means that the information I'm presenting here is unbiased, I have no financial incentives, and I'm just trying to get the information out to the patients who need to know about it. Additionally, I haven't personally implanted any Invista lenses of any type in the past. Now, this isn't for any particular reason. I have a lot of colleagues that use these lenses and get great results. However, the clinics and surgery centers that I operate at now and that I've operated at in the past just happen to use other manufacturers as their primary lens providers. Most of the initial reports of TAS that I were hearing from colleagues were specifically using the Invista Envy lens. This is Bosch & Lam's newest multifocal lens that was just approved on the market within the past year or so. However, the voluntary recall that came out on Thursday this week from Bosch & Lam includes not only the Invista Envy lens, but also the Invista Aspire lens, which is their EDOF, or Extended Depth of Focus lens, as well as certain batches of their monofocal lens. Anecdotally, from what I've heard from colleagues and the cases that I've heard mentioned through my network, it does seem that the majority of these cases have been related to the Invista Envy lens. Shortly after first hearing about some of these cases of tasks from colleagues, I received information that was sent out to surgeons and surgery centers recommending that we rinse these lenses with sterile solution prior to implantation in the eye to help reduce the risk for TAS. In a minute here, when we go through the etiology of TAS and how it occurs, you'll understand why that would be helpful. There are surgeons who have been using this lens a lot more frequently than me who've reported good results when they add that additional rinsing step in. However, with the voluntary recall, even these surgeons will likely pause their use of these lenses until we have more information. Now, although we don't have all the information yet and the timeline isn't totally clear, I think this voluntary recall from Bosch & Lam is the correct move. In the press release from Bosch & Lam regarding the recall, the CEO shared these words, as much as we believe in the Invista platform, patient safety will always be our number one priority. Surgeons and patients trust Bosch and & Lam, and I believe that this voluntary recall is the best thing we can do to honor that trust. Now, as much as we would like to avoid complications during surgery, these things do happen in surgery, particularly whenever we're introducing new devices for the first time. There have certainly been other instances in the past of lenses or other intraocular devices that were initially released after passing FDA safety trials 
but later were noted to have some safety concerns and had to be recalled. Now, when there are unexpected complications arising from a lens or a device used in eye surgery, those complications kick off a massive investigation and a root cause analysis looking into why this complication might be occurring. And really, that's the step that we're at at this point. Bosch and Lam is actively collecting all the information they can about any cases that have occurred. These lenses are tracked down to the manufacturing date and the lot number, so these companies are able to see exactly when and where these lenses may have been made. That allows them to get very specific with their investigation and look into whether these lenses are coming from a certain facility or whether there was a recent change in the manufacturing process that might be responsible for some of this inflammation we're seeing with the lenses. Pausing the use of these lenses nationally while Bosch and Lam completes that investigation is the absolute right move for patient safety. I really commend the CEO and the company for doing what's right, despite the fact that they know they're gonna take a short-term financial hit, a short-term reputation hit. In the long term, I think this transparency will actually help their company and help to build trust with surgeons and patients. Now that we're up to date on what exactly is going on with this recall, let's talk about why it was recalled. This recall is happening due to something called Toxic Anterior Segment Syndrome, or TAS. TAS is an acute, sterile, anterior chamber inflammatory reaction that typically happens within 12 to 48 hours following cataract surgery. That's a lot of fancy medical words, so let's break down exactly what that means. So acute means that this is fast onset. It's something that happens and develops very quickly after cataract surgery. And rather than being a low-grade, long-term problem, it's a short-term but serious problem. Sterile means that this is a non-infectious process. TAS isn't caused due to bacteria, a virus, or a fungus causing this inflammation. Rather, it's typically some sort of instrument, sterilization problem, some contaminant that's causing the immune system within the eye to very strongly react after the surgery. Now, this is important because TAS is most often confused with acute endophthalmitis, which is an acute infection that can occur in the eye following cataract surgery. The treatment for these two syndromes are very different, but it can be challenging to really know which we're dealing with when we see a high degree of inflammation after surgery. Now, again, TAS is very fast onset. Most patients develop symptoms within 12 to 48 hours after surgery, and these symptoms can include severe redness of the eye, pain that can vary from mild to severe, photophobia or sensitivity to light, as well as a clouded or hazy appearance to the cornea or the front of the eye. Now, I normally avoid showing pictures of scary eye pathology in my videos because it can be a lot to look at, but I do want to include some pictures of TAS in this video because I think it's so important for patients that are dealing with this right now to understand how these symptoms might present. Now, if you don't want to see these images or you'd prefer not to take a look, just skip ahead about 15, 30 seconds and you'll be past them. So in these images here, you can see the front of the eye has a significant degree of inflammation going on. The cornea is hazy or clouded. We see a lot of inflammatory cells in the anterior chamber of the eye. We even see some cells that have settled towards the bottom of the eye, almost like a snow globe after it hasn't been shook for a while. That's a medical condition we call the hypopion, where the white blood cells are so dense that they start to collect, and it's a sign of very severe inflammation in the eye. Now, the good news with TAS is that it's typically very responsive to treatment as long as it's started early. Most cases of TAS can be resolved by increasing the steroid regimen that we use after surgery. After cataract surgery, there's always a mild degree of inflammation, so pretty much all patients are using a steroid drop early on for the first few weeks to help that inflammation resolve. Now in TAS with this severe inflammation, we have to significantly increase the dose regimen or increase the potency of those topical steroid drops to resolve this inflammation. If this initial conservative approach to treatment doesn't quickly start to resolve the inflammation, more drastic measures can be taken including injecting steroid into the eye, or doing a surgery where we go in and we wash out the inflammation from the eye and also try to wash out any contaminants or particles that might be causing that inflammatory response. As mentioned earlier, one of the most difficult things with treating TAS is to differentiate it from an acute infection. The thing that helps us the most to differentiate this is that TAS is a usually quicker onset than an infection. Typically, the symptoms of TAS will show up in the first one to two days, whereas most infections after eye surgery 
don't show up for a few more days, more like three to five days following surgery. Now, that being said, it's very important to get this differential right because the treatment for TAS, where we increase the steroid drops or increase the steroid treatment significantly, will actually worsen an infection because it decreases your body's ability to fight that infection within the eye. The treatment for an acute infection like endophthalmitis is typically much more aggressive right off the bat where we're injecting antibiotics into the eye or we're doing a surgery called a vitrectomy where we're actually removing some of the contents in the back of the eye to try to remove the infection from the eye. For this reason, it's not uncommon for some patients who have TAS to be misdiagnosed and actually treated as if they have an infection in the eye rather than just an inflammatory response to some sort of contaminant or particle. Now getting a little more specific to what I've been hearing about these patients who are having TAS associated with the Invista lenses, the good news from the cases that I've heard, patients have responded very well to that more conservative topical treatment. I have heard of a few patients who had aggressive treatment for a possible infection who thankfully are doing well, but in retrospect may have actually had this sterile TAS response rather than a true infection. Now, Obviously, I haven't heard of all cases affiliated with this recall. Bosch and Lam is going to have the most information about this, and they're still in the information gathering phase. But thankfully, from the reports I've heard so far, it sounds like patients are being identified with this problem and they're responding well to the treatment. So finally, I wanna talk a little bit more specifically about how this recall will affect patients who've either recently had cataract surgery or who are having cataract surgery in the near future. If your cataract surgery is scheduled in the near future and your surgeon was planning to use one of these Invista lenses, they're obviously gonna to have to change that plan due to this recall. The good news is, is that there's a plethora of lenses available to us from different manufacturers that have very similar optical qualities that can get you to that visual result you were looking for. For example, if you were planning to have the Invista Envy lens implanted, which is Bosch & Lam's multifocal lens, Johnson & Johnson and Alcon both make additional multifocal lenses. For Johnson & Johnson, it's the Odyssey lens. For Alcon, it's the Panoptics lens. I personally have used both of these lenses and gotten great results with them. You can expect a similar range of vision to what you would get with that Envy lens. If you were planning for the Invista Aspire lens, your surgeon can switch to the Alcon Vividi lens or the Johnson & Johnson Ihance or Symphony lenses to give you that extended depth of focus. With those EDOF lenses, you get some range of vision, not as much as multifocal lenses, but typically you also have less nighttime side effects. Now, if you want to learn more about some of these different lens options that are available, I've actually made a video that goes into detail about the different lenses we use during cataract surgery, the advantages and disadvantages of those lenses, and what you can expect with your vision after the surgery. So check that video out, and if you'd like a reference that you can go back to over time, I also made a digital lens guide that you can download for free. Just scroll down to the description. This lens guide goes through those same different categories of lenses, talking about what range of vision you'll get with each type, the quality of your vision you can expect, and it's handy to have because you can look back to it after you talk with your surgeon about what option is best for you. And finally, I wanna address if you're a patient who's had cataract surgery recently, who had one of these Invista lenses implanted in your eye, what are the important things that you need to know? Now, this recall is related to a quick, acute inflammatory response that happens as the eye reacts to this new lens being inside of it. It has nothing to do with the optical quality or the long-term visual results of having that lens in your eye. By all reports, the optical qualities of these lenses are actually excellent, and if your eye has already fully healed from surgery, it's very unlikely that you're gonna run into any problems from having one of these lenses. Now, if you've had one of these lenses more recently, in the past few days or within the past couple weeks, you do wanna be more cautious and watch out for any of those symptoms that we described earlier in the video. It is extra important for you to make sure that you follow all of your post-operative instructions, that you make all of your post-operative visits, and you should have a low threshold to call or go to your surgeon's clinic if you're having any issues at all with the eye. The good news is even with this recall, the actual incidence, the percent of people who are having this task response is still very low. So there's a much higher chance that you're not gonna have a problem than the chance that you will. So that wraps up what we know right now regarding this recall from Bosch and Lam. And I hope I've answered some of the questions you probably have if you're around the time of cataract surgery and wondering how this recall affects you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want updates as we learn more about what's going on with this recall. This is the Cataract Companion channel where my only goal is to help you get your best cataract surgery result. I'll see you next time.